Did you know you can change what's on the node toolbar in Fusion? Well, today I'm going to show you how, as well as a few tips and tricks to make the process even easier. Plus, at the end, I have a bit of an Easter egg feature that I don't think Blackmagic wanted us to find. Let's get started. On the Fusion page, you can see I already have my custom node toolbar loaded in. Since I like to keep DaVinci Resolve close to the default interface for my videos, I typically work with the default Fusion toolbar. And I'm just extremely used to using that after all these years. While this one isn't perfect, it's probably pretty close to what I would actually use and will probably end up using when I'm not recording videos. The first thing I would recommend to do is take a minute to plan out what you all want on your node toolbar. That makes the creation process quite a bit easier. The best way to do this is just to add in the nodes and then organize them to their different sections, and you'll see why this is important in just a minute. So like I said, on the toolbar, we'll be able to create different node categories. So for the first one, I have some generator nodes, then I have stuff like the transform, the DVE node, I have the trackers, masks, and so on. First thing I'll do is add in a background node, then next I wanna have a text plus node, and I'm just using shift space to add these in. I'll do a fast noise node, and then a paint node. Now we're not gonna do anything to put these on the node toolbar yet. We wanna add in all of our nodes, so that way we know the order that we wanna keep them. The next column has stuff like the transform, DVE, letterbox, duplicate, as well as the time speed and time stretcher nodes. Then I'm gonna throw in the tracker, planar tracker, camera tracker, and magic mask in their own section. And what is a node toolbar without a bunch of masking nodes? So I have the rectangle, ellipse, polygon, b-spline, bitmap, and the Mac control node. Next up is my favorite special system inside of Fusion, the shape system. So I have the s-text, the s-rectangle, the ellipse, the polygon, the transform, change style, boolean, and finally the render node. Second to last, we have a bunch of the effect nodes. So the blur, shadow, glow, color corrector, brightness and contrast, and the channel booleans. And then last, but certainly not least, are my color space nodes. So I have the Cinean Log, the Gamut, and the Color Space Transform. And while it's really good to lay out all of the nodes and have a plan for creating a toolbar, this is not set in stone. We'll be able to go back, rearrange stuff, add new ones, and remove nodes from the toolbar later on. So when you're starting, you're going to see the default toolbar like this. And to create a new one, you need to right-click, go to Customize, and then we'll do Create Toolbar. I'm just going to call this Video Toolbar since I'm making it inside of the video, and then press OK to save that. Now that's not going to change anything right away, but if we right-click on here, we can verify that Video Toolbar is selected. What we have to do now is go through and delete all the nodes on this toolbar. So if we right-click, we can come to Customize, and instead of just removing one node, we can remove the group. And that's going to remove everything in between the closest dividers. So in the next one, I'll do the same thing, customize, remove group, and keep doing that for the rest of them. And once that's done, this looks pretty weird because we have nothing in the middle section of our screen. Now to actually add nodes, you can either drag something down from the effects library and drop it on here, or you can take a node from the node graph and drop it on there and it adds it in. So that's why we did all the organization down on the node graph. So I'm going to put these in the order I want. I'm going to do background, then text, fast noise, and paint. Once we've added in the nodes from the first section, we'll right click on the last node, go to customize and do add divider. This will add in a different line and create a second group for us to add in rest of our nodes. If you're adding something and accidentally drop a node in the wrong spot, it's actually really easy to change it. You can just click on the node and drag it to a different location. And if you accidentally add in the wrong node, you can right click on it, come to customize and remove just that node. You do not want to delete the entire group. But we're going to continue adding in the rest of the nodes in this section. Then again, right click on the last one, go to customize and do add divider. Then we'll just keep dragging these up. Now that we have everything set, we need to go in and lock this toolbar. Because right now I could drag a node down and accidentally rearrange some of the nodes in the process. We don't want that to happen. So if we right click on the node toolbar, we can lock this. When we do this, we can't rearrange anything, but we can still add in the nodes. Something else that you can do is create different toolbars for different workflows. For example, if you do a lot of 3D, you could build a toolbar that has all of your shape nodes, material nodes, and then the lights in the 3D scene. It's really easy to switch between these different toolbars. So if you're working in 3D, you can have the 3D toolbar selected, and then you can go back to your normal one for the rest of your 2D work. This is just one of the many ways that you can speed up your workflow in Fusion by eliminating some repetitive tasks. If you want to make this process even faster, I'd recommend pairing it with keyboard shortcuts in Fusion. Using this, I can press a single key to add in nodes instead of doing shift space or dragging it down from the toolbar. I'll link a video on how to do that at the end, but what is this Easter egg that I mentioned at the beginning? Well, this is a feature that was carried over from older versions of the standalone Fusion program. In the node graph, do control, shift, and space, and this will open the select action window. Once that pulls up, search for toolbar, and that'll have the customized toolbars option. 
When I click add for that, it's going to ask us to create a new toolbar. And when we do that, we can look through any of the categories in here and then double click on a node to add it to the toolbar. And you can see up at the top, it's added in the blur node. So I could go through and add in a bunch of different nodes and I can even use this to add an action. So I can come to the actions dropdown, come down to utilities and add in something like the import SVG button as well as the macro editor. Once we hit okay, another really cool thing about this is I can anchor this to any of the sides of the fusion program. So if I wanted to put this down at the bottom, I can keep all of those commands right down there. It's a little more accessible in that case. Now the UI and control for this is a bit ugly and that's because it was never meant to see the light of day inside of DaVinci Resolve. I wouldn't be surprised if this got removed in the near future, but maybe you can fit it in your workflow until then. As always, if you want to support the series, check out the editor collection and editor titles packs linked down below. They are game changers when it comes to editing in DaVinci Resolve. If you have any questions about these node toolbars, just let me know and I'll see you in the next video.